one of the features that so many people have asked about is multi-output instruments in Luna, and that's finally here. So let's have a look at how to set up multi-output drums in Luna, but this is also going to work for other multi-output instruments as well. It's just multi-output drums is what I use most often, and I'm going to show you with Easy Drummer 3 and the free MT Power drum kit. And the first thing you want to do is make sure you have Luna updated to at least version 1.7. So you can go up to Luna here and go click on about Luna and you'll see what version you have. If it's under 1.7, you're going to want to update. So you can click on the check for updates there or open up UA connect and update it from there. Once you have that version, we can get started with the multi-output instrument. So I'm just going to go to track, new track, and I'm going to add an instrument just like any other instrument you would add before. This is stereo. The name of this one will be Easy Drummer, we'll say, or I'll just put Easy D. And then we go to instrument here and I'll scroll down. There's Easy Drummer 3 right there. I'll add that. I don't need any of this tape emulation right now. You can add it if you want. I'm just going to leave it off. Click OK. And now we've got Easy Drummer 3 right here. And you can already see it's selected this multi out mixer and it's added this line here, which we're going to look at in a bit. But if you want this closed down, maybe you don't want to use the multi output feature. You can just click on that and you won't see it again until you click. So that toggles that on and off. And we actually don't need to have that enabled to start setting up the multi-output. So I'm going to close it down for right now, just to show you. And we'll go to the mixer now. With Easy Drummer 3, I like to click on this right here where it says mixer, and we'll go to multi-channel for our route outputs. And then for each section here, you would just choose what channel or channels you want to output to. So you can see I have three different kicks here. I could put each of these to their own separate track, or I could just group all of my kicks to one. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to leave this at one and two for our kicks. And then we have a snare top and snare bottom. I like to have these on their own separate tracks. So three and four for snare top is fine. If for some reason, this isn't how yours is. It didn't do it automatically like this. You can just click on here and you can change these however you want. But three, four is fine for that. Snare bottom, five, six is fine. Seven, eight for the hi-hat. The toms, I like to have all of them output to the same track. So all of my toms will be on the same track, which will be output nine and 10. And then we have the ride, which is 11, 12, our overheads, which is also showing 11, 12. I actually want to change that. So I'm going to put that as 13, 14. And then we have an overhead mono as well. So I can change that to 15, 16. And then ambience, which is like our room mic, we'll put that to 17, 18. And then we have ambience mono. Say we want that... 1920. Sometimes I don't even mix these monos in, but I will for this. And then crunch, which is like your trash mic or whatever you want to call that. We'll put that to 2122. And then I don't really worry about these because I don't use these one shots, but you can change those if you wanted. So I have all of my tracks set up the way I want in here. But if we click on multi output mixer, I still only have one and two, which right now is my kick drums. So if I click on kick, you can see it's outputting there. But if I click on snare top, it's not outputting anywhere. So now we have to add our multi output tracks and you can do that right here. So there's this plus sign right here. We're going to click on that and you can add as many as you want. So you could go in here and count one, two, three, four, and count however many you need, and then you can add them there. But the good thing going one by one is we can name them. And another thing I want to do here is click on more settings because there's more settings here. 
And you'll see that we can add tape emulations in there and the console emulations. You can do that if you want. I'm going to leave that off, but I'm going to go to multi out here. I'm going to click on that. And for this track, it's OK because it's already set to three, four, which is the next one that we want to create. I'm just going to name this snare top and everything looks fine in here. I'm going to click add. And now we have snare top. So now I want to create another one and that will be for the snare bottom. Click on the plus sign. We're just creating one, but if you wanted to create more, you can put whatever number in there. I'm going to name this one snare bottom and we'll go to more settings and you can see it knows already that I want this to be five and six. I guess it's smart enough to realize we're just going to the next set of outputs. So that's fine right there, but of course you can add the tape and consoles however you want. We'll click add, close that down, click the plus again, and this time we'll add the hi-hat. So hi-hat, more settings, just to make sure this is the correct one. Seven, eight, that's correct. We'll click add, and there we go. I'm not gonna go through all of these because you kind of got the picture right now, how you're going to set up all of these for Easy Drummer 3. But let's just have a quick look at what we've done here. So I'm going to close this down for right now because you can see in our timeline view here, we have all of those tracks listed under the Easy Drummer. We started with Easy Drummer, which is actually our kick drum now. So I'm gonna click and rename that to kick because that's what that is. And you can see we have them all there. If we go to our mixer view, you can see we have them all in here as well. So let's open the instrument up again. And now I just want to show you when we click on kick, it's outputting to our kick track. When we click on snare, it's outputting to our snare. And you can see because I'm just clicking on the snare, it's doing both the snare top and bottom. And you'll also notice over here that's outputting to our overheads because there's going to be some snare going into the overheads as well. And also with our hi-hat. So you can see each of these drums is going to their own track now, which is really cool because we can add our own compressors, EQs, and all of that fun stuff to each of these tracks individually. So I'm gonna close that down now and we'll add MT Power Drum Kit just to show you that. But there's some other things I wanna show you after that you can do with these tracks. So be sure to stick around for those things or skip ahead, I'll have time codes down in the description. And by the way, I'm Zane, welcome to Audio Tech TV, where I do audio tech tips, tutorials and reviews and tutorials like this one for Luna. I have a bunch of Luna tutorials on here. So if you aren't subscribed already and Luna interests you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. All right, so I just realized that MT Power Drum Kit isn't available as VST3 and Luna only uses VST3. So I'll show you another free drum plugin. We'll go up to track, new tracks, and change that to instrument. Click here. And this time we're going to go with BFD drum player or BFD player as it's called right here. And this is a free option for you. And again, I'm going to remove that tape emulation. So we'll put none there and I'm going to click OK. All right, here is our instrument down here, which is BFD drums. I'll click and rename that to BFD just so we know what we're looking at. Plus I'm going to click here and I'm gonna change the color just so it doesn't look like it's part of the same thing. We'll change it to that. All right. And I'm just going to choose a random preset in here. We'll say 80s lover. Sure, why not? Okay, we have our drums loaded up and if I click on any of them, you can see that one's coming through Hi-hats coming through, snare, kick, toms. Everything's coming through this one channel. Now, if we go over to our mixer, which is right here, we can go down to the bottom and you'll notice that everything's set to our main output. And what we wanna do is change our kick drum. So we want this to be mono, so we'll go to mono one for our kick. Our snare, we can do mono two. 
our hi-hat, we'll just do mono three. Toms, I'll do mono four, and I'll do that for all of them. And you can continue doing this for all of your drum parts in here. You can see if we scroll down, you also have your overheads in here, your room, booth, ambience, all of that fun stuff you have in here as well. But I'm not going to get into all of those because you get the point of what we're doing here. So we have that set up. Let's now go up to our multi output mixer. If you don't have that clicked, click on that. And we'll click on this plus sign here. We're going to create a mono track here and just one. We'll create the kick. So that's kick, go to our more settings. And you'll notice that it says multi out 17, but we set this for mono one. Well, let's click on that. You'll notice there is no mono one available. It's first one is 17. That's because our mono tracks kind of continue on from 16. So you have 16 stereo, I guess in here, and then you have 16 mono tracks. So. Mono one is going to be 17. Now let's create this. We'll click add, make sure this is working. And you can see it's outputting to our kick here and it's still outputting to our stereo master or main output as well. And we can lower that down or do something with it later. But right now we're just going to create another one. We're going to go to mono. And this time it will be our snare and go down to more settings. It's at 18, click add. And now let's click on our snare. You'll notice that a little bit is going into our kick. That's because there's going to be some bleed that's going from the snare into our kick microphone as well. It's not a whole lot of the snare going in there, but when you're recording real drums, you have that issue of your snare going into your kick. So it's just like that. And we could continue doing this, but I've shown you so far what we've got here. I want to show you the next thing that we can do. And we don't need to use all of them for this. Of course, you could go on and on and on with it. But let's say for this BFD, we might want to create a bus. So kind of like a master bus where all of these tracks go into it and go up to track new tracks. And this time we're going to go to bus and I'm not going to have any of that on there. I'm going to call this BFD bus. All right. So now what I want to do is click on the first track that I want in this bus. And then I hold down shift on the computer keyboard and click on the last track that I want in this bus. And I'm actually going to go over to the mixer view here. So you can do that same thing in the mixer view. You click on the first one, hold down shift, click on the last one. You can see all three of these are selected. And now we're going to go up to this section up here and we're just going to scroll down to outputs. So you can see this output section, if it's hidden for some reason, you could just click on that and we're going to click on main. And now we're going to change this to BFD bus just by clicking there. And you'll notice because we had all three of these selected BFD bus is now the output for all three of those. And now if we open up the BFD player, let's just move it over here so we can see our bus right there. And if we click on anything, you can see it's all going to go through that bus. So you can now add a bus compressor on there, or you can control all of the levels at once. And another cool thing I guess I didn't show you yet is up here in our multi output section, you can click on that. And there's some options here for MIDI input and MIDI output. Maybe that's something you want to do. But also if we adjust these levels right here, this right here is the same as our fader. So if I adjust this, well, because I'm clicked on all three at the same time, it's moving all three. Let's just click off of that and we'll just click on the kick. You can see that controls the fader. And if I use the fader, it's going to move that dial up at the top there. So that's kind of cool because if you're in the timeline view, we'll go back to timeline and you want to start messing with levels, you can easily see all of the drum levels up here. You don't have to go over to the mixer view. You can just do it all 
right here, or you could adjust them down here. Whatever works best for you, it does give you some options. It's really nice. Multi-output instruments in Luna is huge for me, at least, because I always use multi-output drums in every one of my projects, and I know it's going to be huge for a lot of people. And if you really want to take a deep dive into mixing in Luna, I actually have a free course right here on YouTube. You can click right here to get into that lots of great stuff in there. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you so much for watching for Audio Tech TV. I'm Zane. Keep creating. Fist bump. Thumbs up.